Hello, this is Bob. In part one of this overview, I showed you how to add bass light to clips in your sequence and then use layers of grades and effects filters to change the overall look of the shot. I'll now show you how to use secondary grades to work on specific parts of the image. I'm going to use the same clip we did before as this already has multiple layers applied. However, the first thing I'm going to do is to use one of the new layers we added to show you how to quickly adjust a specific colour or range of colours in the image. In this shot I want to reduce the saturation of the lips slightly. To do this I'm going to use the hue shift grade. The first tab provides us with controls to adjust the saturation of the six primary colours. To reduce the saturation of just the reds in the image I simply drag on this slider. These sliders are also mapped onto the six knobs on the artist colour. The results can be very effective and it's a quick adjustment to make. However, for more precise selection of colours, we can use the HSL curves in the curve grade. First we need to enable the pick option, then we can drag across the colours we want to adjust. This automatically adds points onto the selected curve, which we can then drag up or down to change the saturation as before. The other curves allow us to adjust the hue and the lightness. So this is one way of changing specific colours in the image. However, it only allows us to adjust the saturation, the hue and the lightness. What if we want to apply these other grades and effects to specific colours in the image, or to change parts of the image based on their shape rather than their colour? Well, to do that, we have to add a mat to the layer. This will allow us to apply a grade to areas inside the mat and not affect areas outside the mat. In fact, Baselight goes a step further and allows you to apply a completely different grade or effect to the outside without it affecting the inside. This is why there are two columns of operators. The outside column becomes available once we add a mat to the layer. In this example, we have a mat which is isolating the area around the eyes. I can show you what this layer is doing if I temporarily bypass it. To bypass the current layer, you can either click on the B button up here at the top or press on Command F11 on the keyboard. As I toggle the layer on and off, you can see that it's brightening up the eyes and also slightly reducing the level of the rest of the image. In the columns of operators, we have a video grade on the inside, which is highlighting the area around the eyes, and a film grade on the outside, which is reducing the overall exposure slightly. To view the mat, we can either click on this button below the viewer and select Layer Mat, or we can press O on the keyboard. To adjust the mat, or create a new mat on a layer which doesn't yet have a mat, we click on the Mat Operators button up here at the top. You can see now in the middle that we have two columns of mat operators. This allows you to create more complex mats by combining elements from these two columns. I'll be covering mats in more detail in another tutorial, but just to quickly explain now, mats can be created using keys or shapes or a combination of both. Baselight provides three different types of keyer, and shapes can either be drawn freehand using Bezier curves or inserted with a single click from a list of customizable presets. All shapes can be feathered to soften them, and the overall mat can be further processed using a range of filters and modifiers to precisely isolate the parts of the image that you want to be affected by the grade or other operators in this layer. In this example, we have a simple ellipse combined with a key to restrict the effect to the area just around the eyes. The inside grade operator will only affect the areas where the mat is white, and the outside operator affects the black parts of the mat. Another way to view the mat is to overlay it on the image. We do this by clicking on the render button below the viewer and selecting Layer Mat Overlay. This shows the mat in green on the image. This can be very useful when adjusting the mat interactively. We can also check which parts of the image will be affected by selecting Layer Mat Invert Overlay. This only shows the parts of the image inside the mat. Pressing Shift O on the keyboard cycles through these different mat viewing modes. The other viewing option in the Render button drop-down 
is bottom layer output. So far, we've been viewing the layer output, which shows us the effect of the grade stack up to the currently selected layer. However, if we select bottom layer output, we will always see the final output, regardless of which layer we're currently adjusting. One of the really cool things about Baselight for Avid is that it includes TrueLight. This is Filmlight's colour management system, which is used in many post houses and grading theatres around the world. This button below the viewer allows us to choose a TrueLight profile to apply a lookup table or LUT to the image display. This is really useful if we are grading on a specific type of display or if we want to simulate a particular type of output, such as a DCI or film deliverable. We can import TrueLight profiles and LUTs from other systems to ensure that our display accurately matches other displays which are being used on this project. TrueLight can also be used within the grading stack itself to apply specific look to an image or to convert input footage from one colour space to another, for example from log C to video. I'll be covering TrueLight in more detail in another tutorial. The third button below the image viewer allows us to export the current grade stack as a Baselight grade file or BLG file. These files can be imported by other Baselight systems as well as other devices which can read them such as the Filmlight Flip Onset system and they include all the information required to reproduce this exact look we've created here. BLG files are explained in more detail in other tutorials on our website. As well as exporting a BLG file for the current look, we can also import looks to Baselight for Avid using BLG files. I'm just going to close the Baselight UI for this shot and then go to another clip in the timeline. I'll replace this clip with a different take which of course doesn't have the grade on it. So I'll apply Baselight and then open the Baselight user interface. I'm now going to load a BLG file which I exported from another Baselight system. This is what the BLG files look like when you browse them in the Mac Finder. They include a preview image which shows the BLG icon plus a snapshot of the image both before and after the grade has been applied with a diagonal white between them. I'll just go back to the first one as that's the look I want to apply to this shot. I click on the open button and the entire grade stack is imported into Baselight. As I step up and down the layers using the page up and page down buttons on the keyboard you can see the effect of all the different layers and their mats. BLG files are one way to export and import grading data to Baselight for Avid. However, to export an entire sequence with all its grading data, we simply have to save the sequence as an AAF. When the AAF is imported into Baselight, all the grading data will automatically be applied to the shots in the Baselight timeline. Similarly, if we create a grade in a Baselight suite on a job which originated in Avid, then we can export an AAF back to Avid, which includes all the grading data, and we'll apply it to the clips in the Avid timeline. Those grades can then be rendered out into the deliverables or further modified using Baselight for Avid. This introduction has covered the main aspects of Baselight for Avid. In the rest of these tutorials, I'll be covering specific tools and features in more depth.